Welcome back to Gator's Corner. Hope you guys are excited. Today, I'm going to talk about the first episode of Fargo, Season 1. So I've only seen the first episode so far, but I felt like I had to come and talk to you guys about it. So the show starts out really slow. Uh, you got Martin Freeman, you got Billy Bob Thornton, great actors, phenomenal, they do a great job. Um, yeah, at first it's really slow and you kind of want to give up on it, but then about halfway through, it just starts picking up the pace. It goes from about 20 miles an hour to about, I don't know, 120 miles an hour. You don't really see a lot of things coming, it just comes out of the blue. Uh, I'll go ahead and give you a warning now, spoiler alert, ahead, for those of you wanting to, uh, you know, watch the show and still be surprised by it, hopefully you've already seen it because it's about to go into season two, so it's a little bit old. So Martin Freeman's like this life insurance uh, salesman guy, and he has this bully who picked on him when he was a kid, and he's still picking on him as an adult, I mean, they gotta be like in their 40s now, maybe late 30s, and he has two older kids, and they pick on him, and uh, I can't remember, I think he... No, I don't think he punches him in the face. I think he slips and falls into a door. Something like that. And he busts his nose all up. So he has to go to the hospital. Well, while at the hospital, trying to get fixed up, trying to get healed, he runs into Billy Bob Thornton, who's also there for some injury that we don't really know about. And Billy Bob Thornton's, like, really freaking creepy and kind of like... Like this. And he's making, like, a little smile. He's like, mm, mm, mm. And staring down Martin Freeman. It's a little, uh, it's a little weird, uh, but anyways, and Martin Freeman's sitting there, and the next thing you know, they start talking, and, uh, Billy Bob Thornton's like, you know, what happened to you? And he ends up basically telling him that this bully from high school picked on him. And then Billy Bob Thornton, uh, turns super creepy. He basically is like, uh, wouldn't you like to kill this guy? Wouldn't you like to get rid of him? Martin Freeman's like, what? And, uh, they go back and forth a few times, and, um, basically he's like, Martin, you know, tells Martin Freeman, Billy Bob Thornton tells Martin Freeman, if you want me to kill this guy, just say yes. If not, say no. And Martin Freeman gets up, and you can tell he's really thinking about it. He's put some serious thought into this. I mean, his life sucks. This guy's picking on him all the time. You have his wife at home who's just demasculating him all the time in front of his family, in front of his brother, in front of everyone that he knows. She'll just sit there and just treat him like garbage. It's really, it's really horrible. The guy's got a bad life. So he's thinking about it. He's like, you know, this is an opportunity that I have here. Uh, but he doesn't say yes or no. He just kind of looks at him and looks away. But I guess Billy Bob Thornton takes this as a yes. He's like, well, if you didn't say no, it must be yes then. So Billy Bob Thornton's crazy. He decides he's going to go find this guy where he works so he can get a look at him. So he shows up to this big dude. I mean, this guy picking on him is like six foot four, 400 pounds, big old dude. He shows up to his place of business where he has like six, seven friends around him, protecting him, basically. And he's like, hey, you know, you know, I don't remember what he says to him, but they talk back and forth. And the big guy's like, why are you here? And he goes, I just want to get a good look at you. Anyways, it's really creepy. Seems like a pretty good way to get uh, you know, some fingers pointing at you if you plan on killing the guy. So then he finds the guy and stabs him in the back with like a freaking hatchet or something. Kills the dude. It's crazy. And Martin Freeman finds out about this, uh, that the dude died. And he's like, oh my gosh, did he kill him? So he calls him and he's like, did you do it? And he's like, well, yeah. He's like, well, why, why'd you do it? And he goes, well, you wanted me to. And he goes, no, I didn't. And he goes, well, I said say yes or no. And you didn't say no. So obviously you wanted me to. Anyways, that's crazy. So the next thing you know, Martin Freeman's sitting down there in the basement, and his wife's there yelling at him. He's trying to fix this freaking washing machine or dryer or whatever, and it fries and is dead for good. She's there once again just riding him, and he's just sitting there thinking. He's just, you can see he's contemplating some bad things, some bad thoughts going through his mind right here. He looks over at the toolbox. In the toolbox, there's this hammer. And you see him just look at it, looks at his wife, looks at it, looks at his wife. And in one quick motion, I loved how they filmed this, he just grabs it. Or actually, I think he holds it for a second. But anyways, he just goes, tink! Just gets her right on the head. And it flashes to her face, and she's just like... And back to him, and he's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh! He's like freaking out. And then back to her, and she's like... And then you just see blood dripping down. And then he's just like, I guess he just freaks out, and he's just like, tink, tink! She falls to the ground, and he just gets over, and he's like, tink, 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 just going to town. It's crazy. And then it's like he realizes what's going on. He's covered in blood, and he's like, oh, my gosh, i got to do something. So meanwhile, while all of this is going on, these two cops find that guy murdered. They find him murdered, 
and uh, the female cop that's in it, who I guess she's just the better detective, despite the guy being her boss, because she finds a clue where some nurse at the hospital heard Martin Freeman and Billy Bob Thornton talking about this dude, and she's like, I think this might be relevant. I'm going to go over to Martin Freeman's house and see what's going on. And he's like, no, I'll go do that. Since I know Martin Freeman, I've known him for a while, I'm going to go check on him. I'm going to go see what's up. And she's like, you can tell she's upset. She's trying to further her career. Anyways, back on Martin Freeman. He's sitting there, blood on him. He's got to clean up. So he goes, he wipes off, I guess, showers maybe, changes all of his clothes, hides the murder weapon. He calls up that dude, Billy Bob Thornton. He's freaking out. He's like, hey, man, oh, my gosh, I made a mistake. Oh, oh my gosh, I really messed up. I need your help. And Billy Bob Thornton's like... Have you have you been misbehaving? Or something like that. It's hilarious. And anyways, he's like, yes, I killed my wife. And he's like, okay, I'm going to come over there and help you. As soon as he gets off the phone with him, Martin Freeman runs and grabs a shotgun and loads it. He's prepared for when Billy Bob Thornton is to get over there to frame him for the murder of his wife and then act like he was just protecting his wife and took the dude out. It's crazy. So uh, anyways, next thing you know, Martin Freeman has a shotgun or whatever and he lays it down for a minute and he hears his doorbell ring. Ding dong. Ding dong. And he's like, oh shit, that must be Billy Bob Thornton. So he runs up there. It's the freaking cop. That guy's there. He walks in and he's questioning Martin Freeman. And Martin Freeman's just like, um, uh, yeah, uh, oh, just like real jittery. Like, you know, he's a life insurance salesman. He doesn't lie about murder to people. So he's like obvious like that he murdered someone basically. And the cop is like starting to get a little bit like, oh, what's going on with this guy? And he notices on the floor some blood drops. At this point he like draws a gun. He's like, hey, I'm going to need you to put your hands on your head, get on the ground, blah, blah, blah. And this is where Martin Freeman's acting I think is just superb. He's on his knees and he's got his hands around his head or whatever and he's just like, I didn't, I didn't do anything, I didn't do nothing, I didn't do anything, nothing, nothing, I didn't do nothing. And he like, he keeps glancing over towards the basement door down where his wife's dead body's on. He keeps glancing over there and the cop's like, looking, like realizing that he's pointing down there. And Morton Freeman's like, no, 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 don't look, don't look down there, you can't go down there, don't look down there, don't look down there. I, I didn't do nothing, I didn't do anything, I didn't do anything, I didn't do this. And he's like freaking out like it's so good. Anyways. Uh, I digress. So the cop's like, you know, looking towards that. He starts to walk over the basement. And in the background, you see Billy Bob Thornton just walking through. And he has that shotgun. And he just shoots the cop. And the cop, you know, cop dies. So uh, after, of course, Billy Bob Thornton stands over his body and looks into his eyes deeply to watch the last bit of life go out of him. Anyways, so Billy Bob Thornton's like, okay, tell me where this mess is. You know, talk about the wife. He's like, oh, down in the basement. So Billy Bob Thornton goes down in the basement. Well, before he goes down to the basement, he lays a shotgun down at the top of the stairs. And Martin Freeman's like, you know, he notices this. So Billy Bob Thornton goes down the stairs, and he looks over at the shotgun. He's like, oh, sh this is my opportunity. So he goes over to grab the shotgun and follow Billy Bob Thornton down the stairs. But right before he gets to the gun, he sees lights, like, flashing outside or whatever. And he goes out there, and it's that female cop. She showed up. She's there. So after seeing that that female cop is out there, Martin Freeman runs downstairs to tell Billy Bob Thornton that the cops are there. But when he gets down there, he looks all over the place, and Billy Bob Thornton is gone. But he hears the cop upstairs, and he's freaking out. He's like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? You can just tell he's sitting there thinking. And then it's like, like he has this epiphany. And then they show a view, like, from the top of the stairs looking down into the basement, and you can see, like, the body down there. And then you just see him run across the screen and headbutt the wall as hard as he can and bounce off of it, flat on the ground unconscious. Genius. I couldn't have thunk it up better myself. So the female cop checks the body and of the, you know, her sheriff buddy or whatever, he's dead. She goes downstairs, and she call, you know, she's calling it in, she's like... Yeah, the husband's alive, uh, he's breathing, but, you know, he's knocked out, so somehow he freaking gets away with it, he gets away with it, he's in the hospital or whatever, no handcuffs or anything, so looks like he's going to get away with this one somehow, it's pretty crazy, uh, so this is all in the first episode, all of this happens in just one episode, it feels like a movie, I have no idea where they're going from here, I have no idea how there is, I think, seven more episodes in this season. Uh, it's pretty awesome. There's a few parts I didn't even touch on because I've taken up enough of your time already. Uh, but check it out. I really liked it. I thought it was really good. Give it the full episode before you uh, give up on it for sure. Hey, what's up? I'm here today to do the product review of a portion of, of this show. Oh, 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 oh. All right. Well, uh, the thing we're going over today is this iron.
Now, I don't know if you guys have ever used an iron before, but one of the great things about this iron right here is, I mean, look how tiny it is. It's cute. I love miniature things. Uh, and this is like a miniature little iron that I found just like, you know, it's just sitting up on that cabinet over there. But I like it. I think it's good. Yeah, it's got a spin dial right here, which, uh... I don't really know what it does. It has words on it and stuff, but you guys know I can't read. Uh, but anyways, this here, this is the handle, and uh, shing! Look at that. And just like that, we're in action. Now, of course, this other end here is a plug, and uh, you probably should plug it in. I have a question for you folks out there. Now, I always wonder this about plugs. Some come with three prongs, some come with two. How do they determine which objects or thingies are going to have three which ones are going to have two so that's my question to all you folks out there so vote right in let me know two three which side of this war are you on back to this thing so up here's a button uh and i'm assuming that this button is what turns it on probably turns it on probably gets the heat going probably have to hold it i'm assuming up here is uh i'm guessing at one point they probably used a laser guided system and a laser would shoot straight out of this onto whatever you're ironing. Now this would keep you straight on the path, and you would iron it. Things done, things flat, things are good to go, you're ready to go to work. Now I know what you guys are thinking right now. Hey Gator, look at your shirt. It doesn't look like you iron yourself. Well I don't. I'm horrible at it. But that doesn't mean I don't like this. Like I said in the beginning, I love miniature things, and this is like a mini little iron. Most irons you see are going to be at least seven times the size of this. And, you know, and I think that's what makes this so special. I mean, it's great for if you're going on trips. Let's say you're going on a trip to Cancun or to uh, Saratoga. Is that a place? Or the Windy City or um, any place that you might need an iron, especially... Uh, a place with high moisture, I'm assuming, is best. You probably want to go there. Because I think there's something to do with moisture and irons. I'm not 100% sure on that. You're going to have to check it. Wikipedia, that shit. Tell me your answers. Anyways, so I've always been told that when this thing's plugged in, this part right here, you don't want to touch. Puts off a lot of heat, and it could burn you. So kids, uh, don't burn yourselves. Or do one time. I mean, one time, you usually learn the lesson after the one time. So maybe burn yourself one time, then not again. But not too long. You could get blisters. I'm just saying. Anyway, so I really love this iron. I hope you guys love it as much as me. It's a, a Norelco. Um, and I'm assuming this was made back in, let's see if we got a year here, 1985. Yep. So this thing's a little bit old. Uh, I was born in 87, so it's at least, uh, I don't know, a year older than me, maybe a couple years. Um, no more than five. So we'll see uh, see what you guys think. Let me know. Tell me. It says 120 and 140 right here. What's it mean? I don't know. Anyways, I've never done a product review, and that's my attempt. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, yeah, peace. So we're like just a little over 20 before we get to 500 subscribers, so uh, I want you guys to go out there, tell your friends about Gator Poon, tell your mom, tell your teachers, tell your priest, tell everybody out there that you know, the mailman, uh, that random lady that you see at the grocery store that you've always wanted to talk to. Not that there's any kind of attraction or anything, but she just seems like she'd be an interesting person. Let her know about Gator Poon. Tell her to subscribe. Check us out. Um, if you guys want me to do something special for the 500th sub, I know that's not a lot of subs and a lot of you probably give me some flack for this, but if you guys, if you fans want me to do something special, let me know and I will. Uh, tell me what you want me to do. I'll do it. I'm pretty crazy. Uh, you know, as long as I, as long as I'm able to do it and I'm not feeling lazy that day. So, other than those things, I'll do it. So, anyways, thanks for joining in. As always, I've been Gator and you've been great.